Hi students. Today we are going to discuss Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit. As you all know, diffraction is the bending of light around obstacles or corners. For light to show diffraction, the size of the obstacle or the size of the slit must be in the order of the wavelength of light used. That is the size of the slit must be very very small. Now when light is incident upon a slit having this small size that is when light is incident on a slit whose width is in the order of the wavelength of monochromatic light used then the light undergoes diffraction and you get a diffraction pattern on the screen. Now here we are going to study in detail what is the nature, what is the uh, nature of the diffraction pattern that you will get on the screen. Nature includes the positions of the maxima and minima and the intensities of these maxima and minima. So here we consider <coughs> a rectangular slit AB of width small a and light from the monochromatic source is allowed to fall on a slit S and the light from this monochromatic source is made parallel using a convex lens that is the source of the light is placed at the focus of this convex lens so that the emerging rays will be parallel. You know in Fraunhofer diffraction the source and screen are at infinity. If the source is at infinity then parallel wavefronts must be incident on the slit. So here we are creating the same condition by the using a convex lens. The light rays from a monochromatic source is made parallel using a convex lens and this parallel or plane wavefront is allowed to fall on the slit AB of width A and on the screen you get the diffraction pattern. Now the light coming from AB is again focused onto the screen by using another convex lens L2. The screen is placed at the focus of this convex lens L2. So this is the setup here. Now first we consider the point P on the screen. The speciality of this point is that if you join S, O and P, this S here, O here and P, you get a straight line. Where O is the midpoint of my slit. The secondary wavelets traveling in a direction parallel to OP. This is OP. The dotted line shows OP. The secondary wavelets traveling in a direction parallel to OP. Emerging from the corresponding points in OA and OB travel equal distances. That is the slit AB. Width A la slit A B ne nyan rand pagidi I divide dal A O and O B. Nala rand pagidi gal I divide dal. E rand slit gallum namku korai corresponding points ne kanaka kam. Ada A ki corresponding I te A nu paranyal adhya pagidi da adhya point. Adi adi ne corresponding I te randamath slit te te adhya ta point. Ada I O A ki corresponding I O. Add a third at the point in a corresponding item, order to the third at the point. Adina the third point in a corresponding item, Rendamata Pagadile, Munamata point. I hope you are understanding. So there are corresponding points. You can consider corresponding points along AO and OB. Now, the, if you consider the rays coming from the corresponding points, then those rays travel equal distances that is the uh, rays emerging from or the secondary wavelets emerging from the corresponding points in the two halves of my slit that is uh, emerging from the two halves AO and OB of the slit travel 
equal distances when they reach the point P. P in the point is equal to the two corresponding points in the secondary wavelets travel to the two equal to the two. At P, these rays have no path difference. If the, if the secondary wavelets travel equal distances, that means they have no path difference. They have no path difference means they have no phase difference. Or all the waves reaching the point P are in the same phase. That means it corresponds to a condition of constructive interference. Or the point P is a bright point or it corresponds to maximum intensity and this point P is called the central maxima. I hope it is clear to you. Next we consider a point P dash. Okay, so we are going to find out the condition for or what will be the nature of uh, the intensities on either sides of P. P, the mid middle point on the screen corresponding to the straight line SOP on the screen, that point P will be bright because all the secondary wavelets coming from the corresponding points in the two halves of my slit travel equal distances. So, there will be no path difference, no phase difference. All the waves reach there in the same phase. So, the point P has maximum intensity. It is called the central maxima. Now, we have to find out what will be the intensities on either sides of P. For that, we consider some random point P dash on the screen at which the wavelets traveling make an angle theta with OP. Okay, let the waves reaching P dash make an angle theta with OP, this angle theta. This is the angle theta made by them. Okay, so those rays are focused to the point P dash on the screen. Now, I tell you that if theta is the angle made by the secondary wavelets with respect to OP, then by geometry, when you consider the right triangle ABN. Now, here if you consider the ray coming from A and the ray coming from B, then the path difference between these two rays, A, the ray coming from A travels a shorter distance, the ray coming from B travels a longer distance. So, they travel unequal distances, there the path difference is given by the perpendicular dropped from the shorter to the longer ray, that is the shorter ray is this one, the longer ray is this one. So, you drop a perpendicular from the sh shorter to the longer ray and you get the path difference. Angane ana namka path difference uta. Apa nammal ivide P1 ni leke alayin P dash leke thunna rand rays ine consider jeno. Onna a il nannu verunnare onnu b il nannu verunnare adil a il nannu verunnare koranja dooravum b il nannu verunnare koodiya dooravum travel eeyunu adu konde etra maatram vyathyasam adil undu nu kandupidikkan from the shorter ray you draw perpendicular to the longer ray then bn gives you the path difference bn is my path difference okay now how to find what is bn for that you consider the triangle abn if theta is the angle made by the ray with respect to OP, then angle BAN will also be theta. This angle will also be theta. So that we can find out my path difference BN will be equal to if the size of the slit is A, then BN is equal to A sin theta. This you will get by considering the right triangle BAN. Now I tell you that if this path difference that is Bn equal to A sin theta is equal to lambda, if A sin theta is equal to lambda, then you get a minima at P1. in the A sin theta in the path difference theta ke tulliyam, ala lambda ke tulliyam P1 nil ninga koru minima gittumna. 
ഓക്കെ പി പി വൺ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ പി ഡാഷിൽ യു ഗെറ്റ് മിനിമ നൗ ഹൗ ടു ഐ ഗിവ് ദി എക്സ്പ്ലനേഷൻ ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് ഇതിൻ്റെ എക്സ്പ്ലനേഷൻ നമുക്ക് എങ്ങനെ കൊടുക്കാം എ ക്വാളിറ്റേറ്റീവ് എക്സ്പ്ലനേഷൻ ഇസ് ഗിവൻ ഇൻ യുവർ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് അത് എന്ത് പറയുന്നു വെച്ചാൽ ഇഫ് മൈ ഹോൾ എപ്പേർച്ചർ എ ബി ഇഫ് മൈ ഹോൾ സ്ലിറ്റ് എ ബി ഇസ് ഡിവൈഡഡ് ഇൻ ടു ടു പാർട്സ് വൺ ഈസ് എ ഒ ആൻഡ് ദി അതർ ഈസ് ഒ ബി നൗ ദി പാത്ത് ഡിഫറൻസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദ സെക്കൻഡറി വേവ്സ് ഫ്രം എ ആൻഡ് ഒ വിൽ ബി ലാംഡ ബൈ ടു അതായത് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ സ്ലിറ്റ് എ ബിനെ രണ്ട് പകുതിയായിട്ട് ഡിവൈഡ് ചെയ്യാണ് ഒന്ന് എ ഒ മറ്റേത് ഒ ബി ആൻഡ് ഐ കൺസിഡർ ദി വേവ് കമ്മിങ് ഫ്രം എ ആൻഡ് ഐ കൺസിഡർ ദി വേവ് കമ്മിങ് ഫ്രം ഒ എയുടെയും ഒ ഒയിൻ്റെയും പ്രത്യേകത എന്താ വെച്ചാൽ ദേ ആർ ദി കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് പോയിൻറ്റ്സ് ഓഫ് ദീസ് ടു ഹാഫ്സ് അതായത് എ ഒ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന പകുതി ആ സ്ലിറ്റിൻ്റെ പകുതിയിൽ എ ഏത് പൊസിഷനാണോ ഹോൾഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അതേ പൊസിഷനാണ് ഒ ബി എന്ന് പറയുന്ന സ്ലിറ്റിൽ ഒ എന്ന പോയിൻ്റ് ഹോൾഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ബോത്ത് ഓഫ് ദം ആർ ദി ടോപ്പ് പോയിൻറ്റ്സ് ഓഫ് ബോത്ത് ദീസ് സ്ലിറ്റ്സ് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ദേ ആർ ദി കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് പോയിൻറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ദീസ് ടു സ്ലിറ്റ്സ് അപ്പം നമ്മൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യണം രണ്ട് കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് പോയിൻറ്റ്സിൽ നിന്നും ഈ രണ്ട് സ്ലിറ്റുകൾ രണ്ട് കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് പോയിന്റ്സിൽ നിന്നും വരുന്ന രണ്ട് റേസിനെ കണക്കിലെടുക്കുന്നു ഓക്കെ സോ ദ പാത്ത് ഡിഫറ ഇഫ് ദ ടോട്ടൽ പാത്ത് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഹിയർ ഞാനത് എത്രയെന്നാ പറഞ്ഞത് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഈക്വൽ ടു ലാംഡ അപ്പം ഈ രണ്ട് പകുതിയിൽ നിന്നും വരുന്ന റേസ് തമ്മിലുള്ള പാത്ത് ഡിഫറൻസ് എത്രയായിരിക്കും ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ലാംഡ ബൈ ടു ഫേസ് പാത്ത് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഓഫ് ലാംഡ ബൈ ടു മീൻസ് ഫേസ് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഓഫ് പൈ വൺ എയ്റ്റി ഡിഗ്രി ഫേസ് ഡിഫറൻസ് അതായത് ഈ വേവ് ഇങ്ങനെയാണ് വരുന്നതെങ്കിൽ ദിസ് വിൽ കം ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് That means destructive interference will take place and we get a minima. Okay, this is the explanation given for getting a minima when the path difference is equal to lambda. Now, suppose the path difference is equal to 2 lambda. Then I divide my slit into 4 parts. First part, second part, third part and fourth part. And I consider... so the total path difference is 2 lambda so that the path difference between the waves coming from the first two slits will be either lambda by 2 and this between these two rays will be lambda by 2 and the rays coming from this third slit and fourth slit they will have also have a path difference of lambda by 2 if they have a path difference of lambda by 2 means they have a phase difference of pi phase difference of pi means destructive interference so this is the explanation given that means if a sin theta is equal to n lambda where n takes integral values 1 2 3 etc then that corresponds to a minima so i think you have got it the condition for a minima is if a sin theta equal to n lambda then you get a minima and if a sin theta is equal to if n lambda corresponds to a minima then 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2 must correspond to a maxima so if a sin theta equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2 that means it corresponds to a sec secondary minima secondary minima means it does not have the maximum intensity as that of the central maxima so how do you get the diffraction pattern on the screen so if you plot a graph between intensity and distance this is intensity and if you plot a graph between intensity and distance on the screen at the center you get the central maxima having maximum intensity after that you get on either sides you get first order minima that is a sin theta equal to 1 lambda then on either side of it you get secondary maxima of decreasing intensity that means a sin theta equal to you get give n equal to 1 so that uh, your equation becomes a sin theta is equal to uh, 3 lambda by 2 that will give you the position of the first order secondary maxima then you get the second order minima that is a sin theta equal to 2 lambda then you get the second order secondary maxima of still lower intensity it is a sin theta equal to uh, 5 lambda by 2 then you get a sin theta equal to 3 lambda 3 lambda as the third minima and the process goes on so here the secondary maxima have lower intensity than central maxima why all the waves reaching the slit are focused onto the central maxima 
so central maxima will have maximum intensity whereas for the secondary maxima the waves are inclined at some angle so as this angle becomes larger when you compare the slit and the screen ee theta na parayna angle of diffraction velidavunnad anusarichittu aa attangalilk ettunna waves inde ennam koreyunu adugondana secondary maximagal cherudai cherudai intensity koranju koranju verunnad angle koodunnad anusarichu dooratheke wave diffract cheyapadunu appo adu vareke ettunna wavegalde ennam koreyunnad gondana secondary maximagalde intensity koranju verunnad okay so my diffraction pattern consists of of a central maximum in the middle followed by different orders of minima and maxima on either sides of it ningalku manasilayi ne yan karudunu appo nammada pattern egadesh engane undavum adayathu my central maximum this is intensity my central maxima will be in the middle having maximum intensity then you get the first order minima then first order secondary maxima then second order minima second order maxima angane the pattern continues so this is the diffraction pattern that you get when light monochromatic light is incident on a single slit okay by as per fraunhofer diffraction now we have to uh, we have one more thing to do here that is we have to find out the width of the central maxima e central maxima ke etra veedi ഉണ്ട് എന്നുള്ളത് വിടുത്ത് ഉണ്ട് എന്നുള്ളത് നമുക്ക് കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റണം അതിന് നമ്മൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യു വെച്ചാൽ വി കൺസിഡർ ലെറ്റ് വൈ ബി ദ ഡിസ്റ്റൻസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദ സെൻ്റർ ഓഫ് ദ സെൻട്രൽ മാക്സിമ ആൻഡ് ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് മിനിമ വൈ ആണ് സെൻട്രൽ മാക്സിമയുടെ നടുഭാഗം മുതൽ ഫസ്റ്റ് മിനിമ വരെയുള്ള ദൂരമെങ്കിൽ വിടുത്ത് ഓഫ് ദി സെൻട്രൽ മാക്സിമ ഈസ് ഈക്വൽ ടു ടു വൈ ഇ വൈ പ്ലസ് ഇ വൈ ബിക്കോസ് ദെർ ഇസ് മിനിമ ഓൺ ഐദർ സൈഡ് ആൻഡ് ദ സ്പ്രെഡ് ഓഫ് ദ സെൻട്രൽ മാക്സിമ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഈസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദീസ് ടു മിനിമ അപ്പോൾ ടു വൈ ഗിവ്സ് മീ ദിസ് ദ വിഡ്ത്ത് ഓഫ് മൈ സെൻട്രൽ മാക്സിമ സൊ ഹൗ ഡു ഐ ഫൈൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഔട്ട് ഇത് ഞാൻ എങ്ങനെ കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നു ദ വിഡ്ത്ത് ഓഫ് മൈ സെൻട്രൽ മാക്സിമ അപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ നേരത്തെ പറഞ്ഞ എക്സ്പ്ലനേഷനിൽ ഒരു കാര്യം കൂടി ഉണ്ട് that is i have one more thing to tell you there that is the condition for minima i told you the condition for minima is given as a sin theta equal to n lambda and condition for maxima is a sin theta equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2 as per this equation sin theta n is equal to n lambda by a and if theta is very small then theta n is equal to n lambda by a sin theta is nearly equal to theta and theta n is equal to n lambda by a now what is this theta n it is called the angular width of the nth order minima angular width of the nth order minima so what will be the angle angular width of the first order minima theta equal to lambda by a you give n equal to 1 what is the angular width of the second order minima it will be theta equal to 2 lambda by a 3 lambda by a 4 lambda by a uh, like that you will get the third minima the angular width of the third minima fourth minima etc similarly how will you find out the angular width of the secondary maxima a sin theta equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2 sin theta n equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2a if theta n is very small then theta n is equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2a so this is how we find it out now with this information in hand i am going to find out the width of the secondary maxima so I'll, we can consider this figure okay so here see p is my midpoint p is the point corresponding to the central maxima and p dash and p double dash are the first minima on either sides so that p p dash gives me p p dash gives me y and p p double dash also gives me y it is the width of the second secondary maxima to either sides okay now theta is the angular width of the first minima theta so what is theta equal to theta is equal to lambda by a that we found out just before and uh, um, from this diagram what is my theta theta is equal to opposite side by adjacent side opposite side is y and adjacent side is capital d the distance between the slit and the screen 
So what is y equal to y is equal to d lambda by capital A. So I got my y to be equal to d lambda capital D lambda by small a. So what is the total width of the central maxima 2y. 2y is equal to 2d lambda by uh, a. Okay, so this is how we calculate the width of the central maxima. You get it as 2y equal to 2d lambda by a. Now, suppose my lens L2 is very near the slit. Now, I have a slit here and if my L2 is very near the slit, that means d is nearly equal to the focal length of this lens. So, I can replace d by small f. In this equation so you can get problems of this sort where you calculate the width of the central maxima 2y is equal to 2 lambda f by a so we have now discussed the uh, nature of the uh, diffraction pattern that you get in the case of Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit and we calculated the width of the central maxima. One more thing is to be calculated here in this essay that is the intensity distribution in Fraunhofer diffraction at single slit. What is the intensity of the central maxima? What is the intensity of the different orders of secondary maxima and so on? I have already told you that the central maxima will have maximum intensity and the sec uh, different orders of secondary maxima on either sides of it will have gradually decreasing intensity because the number of waves reaching those corners at larger angles will be less okay now we have to find out the intensity of the central maxima in the different orders of uh, the secondary maxima which we will we'll do in the next class so i hope this much is clear to all of you if you have any doubts please do contact thank you